Hi everyone, Gerard Scarpacey here, craft hairdresser and co-founder of the Hairbrain community. Back on the West Coast today, if you joined us just a few days ago, I was in New York, but I had to get on a plane to make sure to be here on time for this very special edition of HB Live. You're going to be working with the master here. We're going to talk a little bit about Shade Dempsey. We're going to talk a lot about Shade Dempsey. But before we get into that, we're gonna take a moment just so all of our friends globally can join uh, because we've got a big audience all over the world. So in that moment, I wanna tell you about something really exciting that's gonna be happening in January featuring Shea Dempsey for Hairbrain. We're gonna be doing our teach-in at the ISSE show. So anyone that's gonna be in California for the Naha Awards or for to attend the ISSE show, you're gonna to wanna to get your ticket and join us. You're gonna to get to see Shea plus 18 other incredible hairdressers live at our teach-in. If you've never been to a teach-in before, this is something you definitely want to attend. It's kind of like having the world's best educators on shuffle right in front of you. Uh, if you love our HB Lives and you love our up close and personal, imagine doing that with 18 educators over 90 minutes. So check it out. There's a few preliminary tickets available now. General admission will be on sale soon. Um, and those are at HB, I'm sorry, they're at hairbrain.pro. That's where you can get those tickets. Okay, I think most of our global audience has, has joined us. And uh, I want to do my official introduction. I've already been giving props to this man, Mr. Shea Dempsey, who's the Global Artistic Director for Sebastian. Now, we all know Sebastian, a legendary company for not only creating incredible products, that helps us change the fabric of the hair. And that's what we're gonna be talking about a lot today, but also incredible technique. The combination of product and technique is really what, to me, the legacy of Sebastian is all about. Now today, and I've been talking a lot with Shay about this already, refabricate, okay? This is something that, you know, anyone who knows the brand Sebastian will know these kind of buzz words, interesting words. And when I think of Sebastian, Sebastian product, I think of being able to change and manipulate hair texture. So this is Danielle. Let's, uh, let's say hello to Danielle. Hello. <laughs> and this is Shay Dempsey, who I just Hi. introduced to you guys as the Global Artistic Director for Sebastian. So let's talk about this concept. Now, if you guys are watching, you can see that Shay is using his razor, or what he calls a blade, which I love, because yeah. it takes out the fear of the word razor, yeah. right? So using the blade, and you have manipulated the hair so that you can work dry. Absolutely. which is something that I know a lot of you would be scared of and with good reason. Yeah. So talk to us about how you've manipulated or refabricated the hair so that you can work dry. Well, I think with Danielle, firstly, you have beautiful, beautiful hair. So we spoke about this, Gerard. It's like sometimes you can just get hair that can be cut wet or dry. And the thing is, it's so silky, it's so smooth. So all I really had to do was prepare the hair by shampooing it, just use dark oil shampoo and conditioner, and then I put some Potion 9 Light in there. So the fabric of the hair, the surface of the hair is really nice and smooth, so you can see how glassy the hair is. So it wouldn't really make any difference whether I cut the hair damp or dry. Um, and that doesn't come along that often. So yeah, so again, does, we, we've been talking about this, and a lot of people are already like razor on dry hair. Yeah, and both Shay and I agree, uh, yeah. we're both people who razor cut a lot, yeah. And there are certain cases on certain hair textures and with certain products yep. where you can make it dry. But 90% exactly. of the time, you don't raise or dry out. No, and I don't recommend this. So as I said earlier on, you can see that I'm sort of, you know, covering the hair with the dark oil mist as well. So what that's doing is it's got it's giving me a little bit of slip because it's a very, very light oil. So if I just take one little piece of hair like so, and you'll see, you see that shine on the surface of the hair? So it helps when the blade goes on, that basically gives me that little bit more condition. So as you can see, the hair is beautiful. Like it's beautiful, beautiful hair. So it really is something that, yes, I recommend like on the right hair. But do I do this all the time? No, so I don't want people to get too scared about, oh my God, he's using the blade on dry hair. Remember, choose, your, your tool is the most important, and then choose the hair. So if it's hair that's very, very curly, obviously I'm not gonna use a blade. But if I'm gonna use sort of a scissor on curly hair, maybe I'm gonna use it in a different way. But uh, for me, really, you know, the fabrication of the hair is important of what I lay on there so that I can create this really nice sort of soft chewiness and much more of a diffused line instead of a solid line. So I, I did use a scissor too. Absolutely, and that's what I was going to get at. Rob Law is watching, and Rob Law is a top fan. Thank you for that. It means he watches a lot. Uh, why, why not pre-cut all the excess length off first? Why do you choose to go in 
and work with so much hair. Okay, so basically um, what I've done is, if you can sort of spin around here, is that basically I went in with the scissor and I actually took away that baseline by just going in and sort of point cutting like so. So that gave me a nice guide of where to go and where to follow to. And the other side of things is when I have longer hair now with the blade, I find that with the zero elevation, it gives me a little bit more tension. So I can hold it down low, hold it down and land my hand here. So the elevation stays low. If I'm up here, sometimes the elevation stays out higher, but really I wanna keep the elevation low so I can really just melt that hair down onto the baseline. So I did do a little bit of pre-work and, and, and again, I'm talking about using the scissor and the blade. It's a combination of creating these different textures instead of it being something that's very static. I don't want a static line. So it looks like we've got a large global audience coming in, so I'm gonna do our official introduction. Hi guys, thanks for joining us today. I'm Gerard Scarpacy, craft hairdresser and co-founder of the Hairbrain community. Today I'm excited to bring you work from my friend Shay Dempsey. Shay is known for being a very innovative hairdresser in terms of cutting and styling. We're here in his salon, uh, Sunset Plaza, which is right here in the heart of WeHo in Los Angeles. And he's doing a big transformation on Danielle. Uh, lots of questions coming in about dry razoring, and that's what Shay wanted to really tackle today. Yes. By refabricating, by changing the fabric of Danielle's hair, which was already a great hair texture for cutting, and using the new Sebastian, uh, it's, a, it's a dark oil, and it is called the Silkening Fragrant Mist. And this is a whole line which we can talk about of dark oil, which has really been a revolutionary product for Sebastian. Now, this is a spray version, and by spraying it on hair that's already silky, it almost yeah. creates like a, a wetness on dry hair for razoring. Exactly. So what you're doing is you're actually preparing the surface of the hair for the blade. So when you press that blade on, what you do is you just get that little catch. And if I do a really quick nip like this, hopefully you're going to be able to see that 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 still looks like it's been cut. It doesn't okay. have that sort yeah, of I mean, frayed, or it doesn't have that damaging cold damaging the hair, Shane, you find you see like little white balls. Absolutely. So you can see, so guys, if you see a close up here, yeah. when you uh, razor dry hair that hasn't been refabricated like this, you get yes. these little white balls on it and you can see the cuticle dying. Yeah. So that's not happening, a combination So you can cuticle. see, exactly, and it's that combination of using the right product, and you can see, and this is for people that are scared. I'm constantly sort of just spraying my mist on so that I can, again, it's almost like dampening the hair down so the blade catches the hair in a nice way. And then I can go in and I can just tap, tap. So it's, it's really using your product as the tool to help you create this nice yeah. choppy look. Shay, can you tell us a little bit about the dark oil line? Yeah. Uh, this uh, silkening fragrant mist, it says it's made with jojoba and argon oil. Yeah. Um, and you know, just in general about the dark oil line, what are some, some pointers you can give? Well, I think, you know, uh, dark oil started many years ago. I think it was about three or four years ago. And we just brought out a oil, which was an argon oil that was completely weightless. So you had a product that did something that was unexpected in that sense. It sort of but gave you the hair think oil is heavy. Exactly. Or dark oil is light. It's like dark matter or something. Exactly. Right? Like infinitely light. Uh... And uh, we were able to blow dry with it and we were able to keep volume in the hair as well, which was fantastic. So uh, uh, upon the success of that, we started to develop then a shampoo, a conditioner, a mask. And so it's a full it's line. It's a full lineup now. Yeah. But um, we were missing like a mist and I was hoping to sort of talk to the guys in R&D about, you know, is there something so you went we can to make? The lab and you put on your yeah, white coat. put the white coat on. There's yeah. pictures of me with the white coat yeah. on actually. And um, yeah, I just said to them, look, afterwards, you know, the day after you have that little bit of bed head and maybe sometimes you have like, you know, hair that's a little bit fly away. If we could get a mist that had that performance of the oil, but yet super, super light, it'd be fantastic. So they came back with the goods, I have to say, and that's it in my hand. Can I just say something here before we go anywhere Please. further? So you can see this shape here and it's the perimeter and the baseline is right here. And I'm just working onto that. So you can see now how there's no white tips. See, there's no little white lines. There's nothing there. And by taking down this section, I can just work the edge of my blade. I, I call it the toe or the heel. So I can go in onto the heel and I can just notch out now. Because I've got a baseline to follow. 
and I'm not doing anything really aggressive. I'm just sort of basically taking the weight out at the same time as taking the length away, and I'm just literally following this perimeter. So it really is something that's very creative. It's very visual. I have my reference point underneath. So now you can see, just put the head down, Daniel. You can see this really nice choppy, but you can also see that it's now starting to fit into the head. So if I do this, you get this fitted shape more under the occipital bone. So, you know, just to sort of continue about the haircut and why I use the blade is, the blade is doing two things at once. So let me do this one more time, is that it's basically taking away the length, but it's also taking away the weight. So let me just take this section down, long zero elevation in with the heel, and I can just start to etch away the hair. And that's taking away that weight so it will melt into the, the previous section underneath. I take some of that away, I'm left here, keep it nice and flat, and then we can just melt it in now. Shay, can you talk about the philosophy of calling it a blade other than a razor? Like, I know that that's important to you, and I want people to hear it. Yeah. Because uh, we, lots of people are using the term razor. I yeah. usually use the term razor, but yeah. when I heard your philosophy about calling it a blade yeah. and why you call it a blade, yeah. let's hear that. Um, I think, um, so this is a personal thing. I always felt that the razor was more of a, a male orientated something where, you know, you're using something that's, it, it sounds a little bit more aggressive. So for me, the blade, or the feather blade is when it came out, was that the blade itself is something that, um, it sounds like it's a little bit less aggressive than razor. Razor to me- It's gonna move feels, her a little bit this way so we get yeah, a great angle it. of what you're doing there. Yeah, blade, is, it just sounds a little bit more creative, I suppose, than it is like aggressive so really that's what it is for me so i can testify as uh, someone in the room here looking at this the hair looks shiny healthy and beautiful yeah normally with working with the blade or razor whatever you tend to call it we, we don't recommend working dry i don't no shea does it when no. you get the right texture of hair and you have the right product and you refabricate it it, it can work. So guys, don't Absolutely. close down your minds. Don't close down. You know, no. there's something called fear. It's false education acting as your reality. Yeah. So if someone told you 25 years ago, don't do something, and you never questioned it or tried, you're limiting yourself to growth. Something to think about there. Yeah, and I, I really do believe that it's, you know, it's something that you can also challenge yourself as a hairdresser is, is to break that fear or break that mold. You know, make mistakes. But honestly, I would not do this. I'm a hairdresser 30 years. I would not do this if I thought I was gonna affect the integrity of the hair. But again, by using and changing the fabric of the hair and using an oil to create that almost dampness to the hair, like there is no white tips. This is, this is a, a, a nice, soft. And lots of people are asking shape. Shay, again, we have lots of people joining. This is what Shay is using. It's the Silkening Fragrant Mist, and I can see why they call it that, because it does make the hair silky and smells fantastic. And it comes out in a very light mist, and it's part of the dark oil line from Sebastian. So again, it's not a lacquer or a hairspray. It's actually the opposite of that. It's a yes. softening product. Yes. But at the same time, it's not making the hair greasy at all. No, and you can see that it's also keeping that nice shine in the hair. Um, and as I said before, I had gone in and I had taken my scissor and that's what you can do. You can go in and you can soften everything out with your scissor. You can take that baseline and create that nice movement. This is all about having transformable hair. And, and that's a big part of Sebastian's sort of DNA is that like, we want to be able to create cool shapes, but we also want to be able to transform from one style to the other. Now, if I go in with a really, really static line and it's very geometric, it's quite hard to actually transform that shape. Right, it's meant so, to, you know, it just makes me think of something. It's like when it's cut super blunt at the end, the idea is it falls into that same shape all the time. All the time. Where when it's tapered on the end, it's more malleable. Exactly. And that's really what's happening there. And really, as I said, that's, that's exactly what we're about at Sebastian, is that like we shouldn't sort of leave ourselves like closed in one box. So, uh, these type of techniques, and they can be used on, you know, wet hair, damp hair, it's not about just dry hair, but it leaves you sort of much more hair to sort of be able to play and transform and use different styles. Can you styling talk for tools. a moment? I know you're about to cut the side. Yeah, yeah. Let's get a good shot of the profile. I'm going to move that Yeah, of course. It, it gives the illusion of graduation. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What you've done. 
And that's what it's trying to do, is what it's trying to do is, if you can see, like, I don't want to, you know, bevel it too much, but what it's done is, it's given us this really cool little head shape. So it's just under that occipital bone, and you're now getting this really sort of nice sort of bevel, and which is did, interesting. If you wanted more bevel, you would just use more pluck pressure with the blade. Exactly. As you were doing the same technique. You would find that reference point below the occipital, and I'll turn the blade around so I don't cut there, and you would come in, deeper, and you would go stronger. deeper, and you would put more pressure so that you fit it more. It's this interesting concept with the blade or the razor of like yep. collapsing the surface of the hair actually makes it bevel, but exactly. it'll also flip out easily, won't it? Exactly. Yeah. It'll also do the other way around. It'll flip out as well. So All right, so moving into the sides, guys. The side. Obviously, this is super important if you want to try this technique. How do we connect to the sides? So we want to get a really good, uh, yeah. good close-ups here and a great detailed so explanation. I'm just going to get Danielle to just dip her head just slightly. So if you want to extend the length, you can always just take the hair from behind, and you can start to sort of take that behind the ear, and you can actually start to work it so you will extend the length. And basically, that's what I want to do. So I'm just going to take a small section and just take that away and I'm just going to start from behind the ear. Now, keep that section low. I still have my guide right here and I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to start to etch out little pieces. So when I look at that, it looks like you work with the tip a little bit and then you go a little flat. And I work with the heel yep. and what it does is if I skim really, really flat like so, if I skim, sometimes that can thin out the hair a little too much. What I want to have is a nice sort of choppy little feel to this. I still want the integrity of the hair. So I am going from edge to edge, back and forth. Um, so really, I don't want to lose and thin Danielle's hair out all, you know, completely. So the same thing right here, I have my guide, it's all here, keep the elevation low, and I can start to turn in and really start to put a little bit more pressure. You can see the pressure coming on now. More pressure here, on the edge and around. Boom. I want to give a few shout outs while, uh, while, while we have a moment. Uh, Renato Herman is watching, Jose Rivera is sharing a lot of love and helping with a lot of the questions here. Michael Snyder, always great to have you here. John Santilli, legendary hairdresser watching, I hope he sticks around. Ben Russell says, nice man. Um, some people are wondering what's happening, so I'm just going to do a little recap before yeah. we finish the side. Uh, we're here at Shea Dempsey Salon uh, on Sunset. It is the Sunset Plaza Salon. Beautiful, beautiful salon here. Shea is the Global Artistic Director for Sebastian, as many of you know. And yes, today, yeah, today he's sharing with us a beautiful, flexible, refabricated balm meaning he's controlling that fabric through technique and product usage, using scissor, razor, and Sebastian product to really manipulate that hair texture. Uh, we'd love to hear your questions for Shay. Yes, he is razoring dry hair, but he's given a great explanation as to why, how he uses product, and chooses the right hair to do it. So if it's something you've had fear of doing, you really want to dial in here, because it's time to kind of expand and, and perhaps try something new. Let's exactly. get back to Shay's technique. Okay, so just before I took that section down, Again, I think people have this perception of like, you're ruining hair with a blade. So I just wanted to get a zoom in there so if you can actually see the hair, and I just went over everything. So by taking it behind the ear, it just gave me that little extension of length. So you get this really nice transition from shorter to longer. But if you look at the hair itself, now I've just gone over it like that just to open up some little spaces with the blade. Like, everything looks really super clean. There's no sort of white ends. If you look at the hair itself, it's really nice in the way it's soft and choppy. So that was just something that I wanted to show you where you can have this great combination. Don't be afraid to sort of use the scissor at the start and then use the blade to take the weight out. You know, it, this, these are something that I wanna be able to sort of share with you guys that I don't use the blade on every single head of hair. I choose my tool that's really gonna work with the right hair. So if you feel that you want to go in and you see all this length first and you want to take it off with the scissor, well then, you know, you could come in here and you could use your scissor like so, pop it down like that, and you could start to go in and start to take that off with the scissor. Shay, would you say, isn't that kind of what being a modern, well-rounded hairdresser is about? It's yeah. about leaving dogma behind, like yeah. I must do it this way, I must do it that way, yeah. I was trained this way. It's about kind of exploring and becoming a master of different things? Yeah, I think 
you know, once you have, you know, the basic fundamentals, the, you know, and know all those elements and principles of design, then it's up to you to sort of like open yourself to whatever way you want to sort of create. I think, you know, um, I know certainly with the blade, it's something that it takes a long time to master, um, but it's great fun. And then once you start to use the blade in the right way, you really feel that it does so many things um, and it creates so many different textures. It's like, it's hard to not use it. I mean, I know you use the blade yourself a lot, so it's like something that it becomes addictive. You know, it becomes something that for me, I can't live without, but that's not saying, you know, I don't not use it. Oh, I, I know. agree completely. You know, it's about being well-rounded. And I yeah. think starting off your career learning geometric hair cutting is, is the key it was for me. Absolutely, same here. And then the precision that comes from geometric hair cutting can be applied to anything. Like, I would say you're being very precise. Yeah. You're not being geometric where you're cutting in round, square, corner, angle, but you're being very precise. I think sometimes people forget precision yeah. can be done in an abstract and kind of artistic way. Yes, and you know, a lot of the time people say to me, but Shay, how, where do I follow? What do I do? It's very simple to follow because you have reference points. You have to create these reference points and that's either like, if it's a fringe or it's at the side, it's the top of the lip, it's I, the tip of the nose. You, you kind of the, replace the word guideline with reference points. Reference points, points. Right? Like exactly. It's not like two rows of bricks that line up. It's like kind of having a bush over here and a bush over there. Exactly. They're, they're references, which is yeah. what it's all about. But you know, what I really like to do is to show people then when I, when I am finished, and if I do want to go over it with the scissor, that I can actually show you, know, show you that like, wow, that's a really cool line. The, the, you know, the line is good. So, um, as I said, you know, you're always going to have people like freaking out a little bit when they see a blade being used on dry hair. Yeah, I mean, I would you it. say that that's a little bit of, of your style too, is to be provocative totally. in Sebastian style totally. over the past, I'm sure it's been about 40 years. How long is the brand? 43 been? years. 43 so, years. From day one, it's always been provocative to always. a certain degree. Yeah, always. And, and you know, the thing is, um, we're always going to break the rules or we're always going to be those type of people that will sort of you know, be a little bit more disruptive, you know, when it comes to hair. We will, we will certainly push those boundaries a little bit more than anybody else. But then, as you say, that's our makeup, that's our brand. And I think that's why I'm such a good fit, is that I don't want to be somebody who's super aggressive when it comes to hair, that I change the fabric of somebody's hair just for the sake of it, because, oh, Sebastian's a cool brand. I don't do that. I promise you, I don't do that. Like, look at Danielle's hair right now. I'm just finished this side. And I want you to really see her hair now after the blade work. Um, I'm going through it now with the scissor. Open up those little spaces. You can see just going through it, just creating those little bit more open spaces to the hair. So when it drops down, we get this nice PC choppiness. The uh, Russian urban design team from Sebastian is sending love to Shay. That's Zorin uh, Radic. Yes, Zorin. And uh, he's been asking me to ask you, what's the story? Must what's be some, the, yeah, must be some inside. Yes, thing, it's huh? an inside joke. What's the story here? What's I always story? say to the guys. So now you can really see that shape starting to develop right through here. So it looks really cool. It's slightly disconnected, but yet you still see that nice blend. So. And lots of people, again, are asking what you're spraying. Um, yep. So if we can show the camera. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the, it's a relatively new product that just it launched. Is, yeah. We talked about it last time I was yeah. here a few months ago that it was coming out yeah. and it was going to be exciting. It's a silkening fragrant mist yeah. from the dark oil line. Yeah. Um, and why are you choosing to use this for this cut? Well, because of the texture of the hair is incredible. Um, I just want to sort of slightly dampen the hair so that the blade will catch the hair and not just slide off the top surface. You still want that blade to cut the hair. Uh, especially like on this top section right now because we're not going to bring the hair and over direct it behind the ear. This is where things get really, really visual now. I just want to show something that's kind of amazing to me. Look at how much product you used. Yeah. And like visually, it looks shinier and smoother, yeah. but it doesn't look like greasy compared to the side you haven't put any product no. on. No, no. That's it, and it's an oil spray. Yeah, And exactly. you know, I think you can see that. Yeah. It just looks shinier, yeah. but, and it's definitely not heavier or more oily, so. No. And now, besides using it for cutting, how would people use this at home? So this is just something that you would sort of take... I'll turn you around a little bit, sure. Yeah, so you can see now, this is what we call the outer veil. So you should be able to see that line follow underneath. 
you can nearly see that veil. So now it's a case of just taking some pieces like this and just going in and you can notch them higher or lower. It depends on how far you wanna go. I'm gonna stay low. But to answer your question about the product, it's basically something that you're gonna use the day after or if you use, um, you use like some hot tools where you wanna create a wave and you feel that it's a little fly away and you don't want to put oil into all the work you've created. You know, you know the mist is something that's going to do it. You so know? I just noticed something that only a hairdresser would notice. Slip. The floor is not slippery. This exactly. is a wooden floor. Yeah. And that says a lot about the product because yep. if I sprayed that much of any kind of oil, yep. we'd usually be, you know, feet up in the air. Uh, but the floor is not slippery, which is really interesting. Looks good. So you can see it's just it's got this really really nice sort of chewy, diffused line. I can go in and really chip into it. But if I do this, it's got this nice graduation to it. So yeah. you get this really nice sort of movement and transformable hair. I mean, do, do you call that sometimes like blade graduation? I'm trying not to use the word yeah. razor because yeah. I'm used to fashion people yeah. like, it's a blade, it's a blade. And I, I get that. I'm more power to you guys yeah. for having your beliefs. Yeah. Um, do you well, call it like blade graduation or? Yeah, well, I think, you know, because we have always used that word for skimming. So we're sort of skimming the hair to sort of fit onto that head shape. So um, we, we always sort of use it for like skimming, but you are, as I said, doing two things at once. So you can graduate the hair, you can reduce the weight, you can take away the length, you can do so many things when you use a blade. And it's all about so, the depth and the stroke and, and the, the pressure, pressure. The pressure. You know, yeah. and uh, you know, it really does take a long time for um, everybody to sort of master the blade. This is not something that just bounces out, you know? Or you see people that are very uncomfortable with the blade in their hand, and then some people- I sometimes people... think the worst thing that can happen is someone picks it up too early in their career. Yes, Because yes. they find easy shortcuts yes, that don't exactly. make for great haircuts, but they make for getting people out of the chair. Yes. Which again, why we both, you know, believe yeah. strong geometric foundation of cutting clean, blunt shapes, connecting corners, building weight, removing yeah. weight. Then once you get that, and I, honestly, like for me, that took a decade. Yes, yes. <laughs> and then I didn't pick up the razor, the blade. Yeah. Razor blade, blade yeah. razor, until about a decade into cutting hair. Yep. Now I'm just literally going in there and I'm just breaking the line up a little bit more, diffusing the line, and I'm just doing like almost like a pen cutting technique where I just go in and I just take little nips. Deeper separations. Yes. Yeah. So that, space. let's see how Danielle's hair looks if we just try to take this and give it a little bit more of a... My, my buddy room. Rick Jaramillo, who's a big supporter and, and a friend and a great hairdresser, he's wondering why you prefer this blade over a straight razor like the type that I normally use. Uh, because I'm, I'm so scared out of my wits that I'll cut my finger <laughs> and I see you guys use it and I just, I just, I, I can't get my head around that I will actually not end up in... There you go. That's a good uh, answer. Because... But you know, here's the thing, guys. So after the last time I did this live with Shay, I started using this type of blade more just to play with it. Because again, I don't want to be afraid. I'm, I'm known for using the straight blade with no guard. But I've been playing with this a lot. Yeah. And there are cer certain differences about the grooves. Yes. And I notice as you're cutting the way you use the rotation yes. of the blade. Yeah. And I've incorporated it into some of my classes. Uh, the skimming, yeah. the skimming idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they're both, you know, for me, they're both incredible tools. And yeah. If, like I said, we talked about it last time. I can show yeah. you how to not cut yourself. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly I it. Promise. I need to know yeah. how to not cut myself because it really scares me. I can promise you that I can teach you that. So I'm going to now continue on this side. And as you can see, I have that guide underneath. So it's, it's very simple. You just have to sort of keep your sections small. There's also another little something that I wanted to say is that when you take hair when you use a blade, always make sure that you have small amounts of hair in your hand. Don't go crazy with big, big sections, okay? So I can use the tip, run it through, and work down. You'd have to just use too much pressure if the sections are thick, and then you lose control. You lose control, and you're also taking weight and length at an uneven proportion. Right. So what happens is you're actually taking length and weight off the top section, and you're not going to be even on both sides because you're having to add so much pressure. I want to give a few so. shout outs. Maria Art loves the concept of taking the hair behind the ear. Um, she was wondering about what product you're using and we'll yep. keep repeating it because it's such an important part of the technique here. This is uh, a new product from Sebastian Dark Oil called Silkening Fragrant Mist. 
It's something that Shay had a hand in, in designing, part yeah. of this dark oil collection, which has been an incredibly innovative collection from Sebastian. Started with an oil, went into a shampoo and conditioner, uh, a few other products as well, and now there's a spray. And why did you think it was important to have a spray for this line, Shay? Because I think, you know, it's, it's that sometimes oils are perceived and are very, very heavy and weigh the hair down quite a lot. And I think something like a mist, it's very easy for the consumer to use something like a mist instead of using an oil. An oil, sometimes it's very hard. You put too much in your hands, you put it out there, and there's really no going back. So you have to sort of like really be gentle. Whereas the mist, as you can see, I'm using it as a cutting tool. And I can just keep applying it onto the hair. It dampens the hair down. So I feel like I've got hair that has a dampener you know, to it. So I can use my blade. That's why I'm not afraid to use. It's like the blade. giving slip without having to wet the hair down. Exactly. It's like a razor cutter's dream. Exactly. Uh, or, or anyone that wants to make that hair slip real smooth. Yeah. A couple things that I've noticed about it. Number one, it smells incredible, which yeah. is a big plus. Yeah. Number two, it doesn't make the hair oily. No. Nope. Uh, I'm gonna move you a little bit here. Yeah. Of course. Go for it. How's that, Randy? The other way. Okay. Here we go. Um, you can see you sprayed quite a lot on the hair, and it just feels like like a natural. Um, not oily at all. Yeah. And only something a hairdresser would notice, the floor is not slippery at all. Yeah. Because normally I was a little worried I'd be like a skating rink here and it's not. So that's a testament to the product itself. Yeah. Uh, Kevin Martin is watching. Great to have you here. Rob Law, yes, that is a feather razor. Yep. Uh, this is called the Feather Styling Razor. We have those available at hairbrain.pro. Yep. So if you want to try one, and we've even got them in silver, you'll love that. Kuki Acevedo is watching. Great to have you with us, Kuki. Uh, we've got people from all over the world because Shay is the global artistic director for, for Sebastian and they've invited their team. So if you're part of the Sebastian global team, give a shout out, we wanna know you're here. If whatever country you're in, I know we had some people from Russia, I have a feeling there are people watching from all over the world. And if you have questions or you wanna share the love for Shay, Right here, very Share unique man, super excited to get to be working with him closer. Throughout the rest of the year, we'll be doing these live broadcasts pretty much every other month um, to the global Sebastian community and the global hairbrain community, um, sharing Shay's brilliance and his technique, and super excited to say we're gonna have Shay featured at our next teach-in, which is at Long Beach on January 26th, Sunday evening, uh, the night after Naha. So if you're in California or you want to come to California, we've got Naha, which is the North American Hairdressing Awards. We'll be all tucked up for that, won't we, Shay? Yeah, absolutely. And then the next night, we'll put our t-shirts back on. Yeah. And we'll go out and do some hardcore education at the teach-in. Tickets are available for the Hairbrain teach-in at hairbrain.pro. We'd love to see you guys there. All right, so let's get back into so the So final section, as I said, don't go behind the ear. So behind the ear is all about giving you that extended length. It's almost like an over direction in its own way. We just pull into that sort of corner back section. Now it's just, as I said, this is the overlay veil. So I'm just going in and I'm just following that section that I have underneath. And really that's all about now. It's been very creative. Like, do I want to take out more weight? Do I want to take out more length? Do I want it to melt in a little bit more? So now I can just use all my different sort of arsenal of techniques. So now I'm going in and I'm just pen cutting that away because I really do want to have this nice little chop um, to it. So I don't want to over direct anything behind the ear. I just want to literally be able to see my perimeter line underneath, which I can see. I'm just taking my sections and now I can just go in there and I can just take away enough weight and enough length so it becomes diffused. And diffused lines are what it's all about for me. I can tell you now, now in my career it's diffused lines because I want hair to be able to transform and I hopefully we're going to if you can stay on with me you're going to see how I can change the fabric of the hair in a few minutes to diffuse and transform this shape into something else because um, and that's not because I'm not a big fan of static I am I'm totally ABC man from when I started my career um, but I just find that this gives me um, much more sort of interest nowadays to be able to transform the hair into something else. So that's the kind of the overarching theme here. It's uh, refabricating hair texture. So to cut it, Shay wanted to make it smooth and easy to work with. So he's been focusing on the new silkening mist uh, from the dark oil line, but then he's gonna change the texture once the haircut's done. I wanna give some shout outs. We've got Brad Lepper from the New Zealand, Sebastian Hey, Burton. Brad. Beautiful work. Um, Rules don't apply, hashtag from Zoran Radich. 
And uh, here's an interesting one that we talked about in the beginning. Love, uh, this one's coming in from Diana Rambo. She says, love the cut and can't wait to try the oil. Do you treat each side of the head separately? Clients are so hung up on being even on both sides, but I think it looks good no matter what. So we talked about this before. You Can you give us your tip on yeah. how you make sure to get the sides even? Yeah, so basically um, what I did was, I before the, we started, I take, I always take a small, small section right sort of from that sort of top of the temple diagonal line and I go down on the occipital bone and I always take that and I cut that first. So, uh, I you suppose, do that sometimes with the scissor? With the scissor. Yeah. So basically what I do is I put in that line and I usually point cut it. So I won't blunt cut it, but I point cut it so that I have a reference point so I can cut to it. I think, you know, when you start to use the blade and you don't use the scissor, you can easily, especially in a situation like this, I've got no mirror, I've no reference. So I have to have a baseline. Well, you've got a, a mirror of thousands of people watching. I have a mirror. They'll tell you, and hey, they'll it's, tell me, hey it's off. Yeah. So I try and set myself up for success. So by doing that, and I would do that in the salon situation as well, is to try and take a section underneath so that you can... It's just smart, start, smart yeah. hairdressing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it also allows you to not be suffocated right now worrying about balance. You can worry about texture. Well, exactly. Movement. I can sort of look at it and sort of say, okay, cool. I, I, you know, I've got a nice shape here. I've got a nice balance. So just to finally go over everything. Because of the hair texture it is, I am actually going to go over and just check everything with my scissor. And I'm sure there's some people going, hey, he's going to check with his scissor. But you know what? It, it can also open up some spaces. So let's put Danielle's head to the side like so. And let's just check through the hair. I mean, it really isn't oily. You can see how, how great the hair sort of still moves. It's not too sort of heavy with that product. So now this is just squeezing the hair and just nipping it. So now it's checking everything through. Just going down, squeezing, squeezing. And this really gives this nice chop to the ends. But also means anybody that's sort of a little anal about sort of making sure that that blade hasn't left any strays. You've done all the work, you've taken the weight out, now you're just going through it with the scissors. So uh, guys, Honestly, this is that combination for me that really works, is that scissor blade, scissor blade. So again, going through, just taking some pieces and just squeezing it with the scissor. Some shout outs, our, our old friend Dion Von Bell is watching. Hope to see you at the teach-in again this year, Dion. Hannah Ruth Evans is watching from Atlanta. Uh, great to have you here. Uh, our friend Ivan Duda is watching from Croatia. So we've got people all over the world as usual. Let us know where you're watching from around the world. Uh, we're always very interested to see. We've had people from New Zealand today, from Russia, from Croatia, from Georgia. And that's what this is about, bringing the communities together. So we've got the Sebastian community of global educators who are kind of learning from their director here through the series. And everyone that's interested in being a better hairdresser. That's the beauty of being open-minded. And that's the beauty of partnering with people. And Hairbrain has partnered with Sebastian globally to bring this type of education to everyone that's interested in it. Now, if someone does want to do a hands-on class with you, Shady, yep. what, what do you have available? Um, you know, I have been sort of thinking about maybe doing something here in the salon. I haven't put anything out together. We did but talk maybe about it would, Yeah, bit. we spoke yeah. about that before, and it would be so great to be able to do something that would be just really, really sort of uh, simple. You know, really talk about how I work with the blade, how I use it in the salon. And um, yeah, maybe something in the new year. I, I think we talked about it last time. I'd yes. love to do it again, a little kind of summit maybe. Yeah. Like a blade razor cutter summit. Where yeah, we exactly. Because I mean, again, guys, I've been razor cutting for a very long time and I learned so much the past two times working with Shay. So imagine if we get a bunch of people together here and Chase got this incredible space here. Yeah, and, you would you guys come? Would you be interested in coming to uh, West Hollywood for a, a razor blade cutter summit? We've got to use both words, right? Yeah. The blade cutter summit. Let's hear what you think. So I just wanted to take off the black cape because it's almost impossible to judge when you have a black cape and dark hair. So um, let me just spin Danielle around, see the movement, see how it falls. 
See, it's got this really and, and cool light, lightly kind of graduated. Like lightly a, graduated. If you wanted more, you would have opened your stroke and yes. went deeper into the hair. Now, if you want to go in deeper, yeah, you just open the stroke. So now I want to refabricate the hair. So I know we've got a few minutes left. Yeah, so we've got time. Yeah, cool. Show us what you're so using. So basically, this is Sebastian Dynamic, which is our dry shampoo. Okay. Sorry, here yeah. you go. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, it's me. Do your, your product shop. Yeah. Excellent. Boom, boom. Dynamic. So, it's almost like what I've done is I've created sort of the oil into the hair to help me cut the hair. But now I want to create a little bit more of a grittier feel, a bit more of a lived-in look. So I'm really concentrating the product on the root. So the root is now getting dried up a so little. So is this kind of a, uh, is it a hairspray? Is it, what is Dynamic? No. Is it dry? Dynamic, it's almost like a dry shampoo. A dry shampoo. So yeah. it has that powder there so we can dry up the hair a little bit. I really use them also to create texture. Mm -hmm. So I want to get it into the root area first and then I cocktail. So now we go in with our sea salt spray which is texture maker. And so we've got to layer on. first we use the uh, silkening mist to cut with. Yeah. Now you're transforming the texture. You yeah. can see it's working. Yeah. So that again shows how light that that silkening fragrant well, mist well, is. Well, that's it, exactly. And you know, as I said before, that's what you know we're all about with Sebastian. It's almost like taking something and then turning it upside down. Right. And if I don't have the sort of liquid tool to help me do that, I'm sort of left in a situation where, you know, well, it's just, it is what it is. So I really like to sort of, and you can plump it up a little bit more. It's changing so much. And it so it starts much. to change. And I know. think that, you know, that's the modern usage of, of product is that yeah. the product can totally change the fabric on its own. Exactly. Even without using brushes or anything, you can exactly. completely change. No, no heat, no brushes. Yeah, change. like even by just sort of using your hands and start to work that product in before you even sort of put the hair dryer to it, you then start to sort of create this new type of shape, which is a little bit more lived in. It's a little bit more streaky. It's a little bit more that this is how she's going to wear her hair. Right. Because remember, the other way is very, very smooth. It's very straightened. And not everybody has that time to actually get in there and do that. So let me just quickly hit the blow dryer on cool or on medium. And I'm just going to apply the texture maker as we go. And this is a salt spray. This is a salt spray. Texture so maker. The more you apply, the more texture you're going to create. So I'm just sort of hitting it through. And I still want to create this nice pieciness to the hair. And really sort of by using sort of just mild sort of heat, you still sort of show the hair cut off in, to its best advantage, you know. It's not something that you want too bed heavy, you know. So really what I'm doing is I'm drying the hair up a little bit if that makes any sense. I'm just drying it up and I'm changing that fabric of the hair. So this was the main thing that you were just applying, the texture maker, which is a salt-based yeah. spray, and now power drying that in. And now I'm just, you know, gently circular motions, just now drying the root. So with the hair, I can feel it starts to plump. Yeah. You know, you get this Spend. plumpiness to it. So it's like, okay, now this is cool. Spin around a little. And now, because it's plumper and it's fuller, you now really start to see that haircut start to extend where it's underneath. It almost looks like it's undercut. So you almost have this, you know, where it comes the cave in. But now the, the jump really is much more sort of visual. So, uh, you know, even what you're doing now, I find sometimes people are uncomfortable. You know, what, what is the art of hand drying? I, I notice you go in, you rub the head a little bit, and you yeah. kind of... There's actually a technique here, it's not just... No, 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 and you know what? A lot of the time is people get a little scared. Very you, scared. You Hairdressers leave, too. It's almost like you have to massage that yeah. product in. So if you leave the product just laying on the hair too much, what will happen is it will look overdone. So the last thing we want to do is to make Danielle's hair look overcooked. So it's really important that we can sort of work the product but it still looks lived in, so I'm always inclined to massage the hair a little. Does that feel good, Danielle? <laughs> How do you like your makeover? You can see yourself now. Yeah, it's fantastic. Looks fantastic. So, 
Let me just clean up here a little. Carrie ML says she just grew her hair out and now after watching this wants to chop it off again. Good. We've got love coming in from uh, Russia. I'm yeah. sorry I can't read the Cyrillic alphabet, but it does say uh, from Russia, <laughs> Ekaterinburg. We've had a winner of the Hairbrain Video Awards from Ekaterinburg. Yeah? Uh, yes, we've had quite a few Russian winners of our video awards. Uh, any of you guys out there that make videos for hairdressers, any type of video that creates value for hairdressers, we're in our last 10 days, you go to hairbrainvideoawards.com and you can enter to win a Hairbrain Video Award and up to $5,000 in cash prizes. Wow, can I go into that? You totally can. You absolutely can. Five Gs. Any videos that you have that are, are valuable for hairdressers, technical, inspirational, uh, something that provokes thought, you can enter that and uh, you can win video of the year. Wow. So now I'm just using my hands as a hairbrush. So basically by just sort of pulling my hands through the hair, it's just almost like raking it through because I don't want to have it, you know, too frizzy. I will still want to have some nice separation. I still want to have that shine in the hair. So I'm really just using my hands like, like a hairbrush now. And uh, let's just play around with it. And these are the finishing touches where you really kind of, are you, are you also checking the cut or do you feel like you've got yeah, everything no, I, exactly? You know what? I, I feel, feel it looks pretty I feel, damn good. I feel for me. good with the haircut. Yeah. I feel like it's nice and piecey. Um, I feel that, that the length is good. Um, and I'm not really, you know, I'm not too concerned about the haircut itself. Marina uh, Emonale is sorry that she missed it, but here's the good news. You didn't miss anything because once we're done here, you can watch this video over and over again. It goes in our archive on our Facebook page, Hairbrain's Facebook page. We've got over 600 videos where I've been fortunate enough to work with incredible hairdressers like Shay. So all you, can, all you have to do is click on it. You can watch it. You can fast forward, rewind, rewatch it as many times as you like completely for free, thanks to the generous support of brands like Sebastian. Looks gorgeous, says Wendy. Sharon Ferguson from South Africa says simply stunning. So I think, uh, you know, it's interesting, Shay, we start off a lot of people worried about dry razors. Yes, yes. That kind of went away quickly because yeah. it proved that you weren't damaging the hair yeah. uh, through technique and using the right product. Yeah. And now everyone's just talking about how beautiful it is. Yeah. So it's interesting, we've, we've changed the dynamic. Yeah, and I, I, I knew I was going to get that, and of I had course. said that to you earlier this yeah, morning, I and I said, you know, but then I, you, you, you can't. You, you have to sort of break through that, and as I said, I'm not going to do it on somebody who, who I'm going to ruin the integrity of their hair. But what's really nice is, like, Danielle, just move your head a little. Shake it, baby. Yeah, so like now you can really see why you use a blade or why you use the combination of a scissor. It's to give you that movement and flow. And like even if she tucks it behind her ear and you get this really cool, play, playful hair, you know, like it's not something that, you know. Fantastic, as always, yeah, Shay. It's a pleasure. Buddy. Again, guys, if you, enjoy, if you enjoy Shay, which I know you do, he's going to be joining us for the Hairbrain Teach-In on January 26th in Long Beach, California, as well as about 17 other incredible hairdressers, but yeah. we're focusing on Shay today. Get your tickets now. They're available at hairbrain.pro. We've got a few tickets left where if you buy the ticket, you also get a three-day pass to the show. So it's a great deal. There's literally like four of those left. So head over there now. Can't wait right. to work with you again. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you to the Sebastian Global Education Community for tuning in. We love you guys. And thank you, Danielle. You look fantastic. Thank Happy you. holidays, everyone. Happy holidays.